There are basically two categories of reason why people don't get their desired IELTS writing score. Either their level isn't good enough, or their exam technique isn't good enough. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you eight of the most common reasons why students don't get band seven or higher in their IELTS writing. The first reason why students don't get the desired IELTS writing score is that they have insufficient vocabulary. If you find yourself repeatedly using the same words or struggling to express your ideas clearly, this will be lowering your score for lexical resource, which is vocabulary. So what can we do about this? Well, first of all, we need to improve our vocabulary. Now we don't just need to improve our general vocabulary, we need to improve our IELTS writing vocabulary. So what I would recommend is to learn from high scoring model essays. Now at englishprotips.com you'll find model essays on all of the most common topics that appear in the IELTS writing test. What I'd recommend to you is that you read the essay, do the gap fill, and then keep a record of all of the useful vocabulary that you find, and then use this useful vocabulary when you're writing your practice essays at home. Now, when I evaluated students' essays, the most common reason why I didn't give band seven was for grammatical range and accuracy. Grammatical range and accuracy makes up a quarter of your IELTS writing score. However, even if one of the criteria is band six, it's going to stop you from getting band seven overall. So imagine if you get seven for task response, seven for coherence and cohesion, seven for lexical resource, but six for grammatical range and accuracy. Well, you're going to get overall band 6.5. Now, as part of your grammatical range and accuracy score, you're assessed on two things the range of grammar that you use and the accuracy of that grammar. Now, I believe that it is the accuracy of grammar that stops most people from getting band seven. So what's the best way to improve on grammar accuracy? Well, the best way is to get your essays expertly assessed. You can use websites like ieltstutors.org who are very experienced teachers and can assess your essays for a very reasonable price. I'll put a link to their website in the description of this video. However, if you're wanting to save money, there are some ways to get basic grammar checking. You can use writer.com, Grammarly, or even ChatGPT to assess your essays. You just need to understand that you're not going to get accurate IELTS assessment, but you will get some insight into the grammar mistakes that you're making. Now, from my experience, the most common grammar mistakes that people make are with articles, subject verb agreement, and tenses. Now, if you go to englishprotips.com, you'll find my task to writing course. And in that course, I've got a lesson on the most common grammar mistakes that students make in their IELTS writing. You'll find a video, a PDF, and then quizzes to see if you struggle with any of that particular grammar. The next set of reasons why students don't get their desired IELTS score is because of their exam technique. IELTS examiners have certain things that they're looking out for when they assess your essays. If you misunderstand the question or miss out on one part of the question, you're going to get a dramatically lower score. So I would recommend that you read the question very carefully and make sure that you understand what it is asking before you begin to plan or write your essay. Again, a good way to get better at this is to read the model essays at englishprotips.com as you're going to see a lot of high scoring essays with relevant ideas. Most IELTS questions ask for your opinion. When they do, you should write your opinion, also known as your position, in the introduction and conclusion. For example, if you get a question like this, in many countries, parents are deciding to have children later in their lives. Do you think the advantages of this development outweigh the disadvantages? Now, you need to give your opinion in the introduction and conclusion. So your introduction could look something like this. Across many societies, parents are having children at a later age. This increased age gap has a number of effects, including for the parent-child relationship. Despite clear disadvantages of this trend, I would argue that the advantages of having children later in life are more significant. 
So here, the examiner can clearly see that we have a position, we have our opinion in the introduction. Now, this becomes more difficult when you get a question like this. Traffic congestion is a growing problem in many of the world's major cities. Explain some possible reasons for this problem and suggest some possible solutions. In this case, you're not explicitly being asked for your opinion. However, you are being asked to suggest some solutions. As a result, I would recommend that your opinion clearly states your solutions. So you're going to put your solutions in the introduction. You can say something like this. Most of the world's major cities have serious traffic congestion, making life difficult for local citizens. One cause is overcrowded cities. Another is the lack of alternative transportation options. To alleviate these issues, local councils should focus on improving tra public transportation and encouraging alternative ways of traveling around the city. Now, I would recommend that you experiment with writing your introduction after you've written your essays. If you do that, you'll know what your opinion is and how to best summarize your ideas for the introduction. In fact, that's what Roy did, and he got bad nine in the IELTS writing test. So when the examiner reads your introduction, they'll be looking at whether you have written your opinion, your position. When they read your body paragraphs, they'll be checking that your ideas are relevant, fully extended, and well supported. So for each idea, I recommend that you have a topic sentence where you introduce your idea, and then at least one or two general sentences where you give an example or develop your idea. And ideally, at the end, you also have a link where you relate your idea to the exam question. Now, I realize this is quite a lot to take in, so if you want more help with this and how to write effective body paragraphs, again, check out my task two writing course, which will help you to develop high scoring body paragraphs. Just remember, each idea should be at least two sentences long. So don't just have an idea that is in one sentence, you need to write at least two sentences for each idea. Another thing you have to do is divide your essay into logical paragraphs. Each essay should have an introduction, at least two body paragraphs, and a conclusion. A good idea is to have each idea in its own body paragraph and to use linking words like furthermore, in addition, and however to link the ideas in your body paragraphs. Your conclusion should do two things. Restate your ideas and restate your opinion. There should be nothing new. Many students lose marks by adding new ideas in their conclusion. Even if you suddenly think of the best idea to answer the question, don't add it to the conclusion. The conclusion simply restates the ideas that you've already mentioned in your body paragraphs. There's nothing new in the conclusion. Running out of time is a serious concern in the IELTS test. You have one hour for task one and task two. Here is what I would recommend. First of all, do lots of timed practice. So write lots of practice essays under timed conditions. You need to know that you can write both tasks in one hour. Secondly, make sure you leave at least four minutes to read over your writing to spot any mistakes and typos. Thirdly, I'd recommend that you do the computer-based IELTS test. Most people can type at a much faster rate than they can write by hand, and you can also easily delete text and move it around. Finally, have a clear structure for all of the common essay question types. For example, opinion questions, advantage, disadvantage questions, discussion questions. Again, you'll find useful structures for all of these essay question types in my Task 2 writing course. Okay, best of luck with your studying, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye then.